Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Ask Dr. Ada. Thank you so much for watching my videos, commenting and subscribing. I see all your comments and like always I respond to everything. On this video we're going to talk about allergies. So some people have sent me messages in my DMs about allergies, your kids have allergies, do they really have allergy, is this an, in is this an intolerance, what is an allergy, I'm not sure. And most recently, I had the honor to give a talk at Kemi's daycare to her teachers about food allergies during one of their conferences. So I thought, why not bring it to my audience and educate you all about allergies and possibly answer some questions you have about allergies during this talk. So if you're interested in that, sit back and relax. This is gonna be an interesting one and a quick one. First of all, what are allergies? So allergies are your body's reaction to harmless proteins in the environment. So it can be things that you are exposed to in food. So like fish allergies, nut allergies, tree nut allergies. It can be things you're exposed to in terms of the environment, like grass, trees. Um, it could be things you're exposed to, synthetic things like latex, or some me even medications, so like penicillin, sulfur, things like that. All of these are things that you can have an allergy to. And sometimes allergies are what we call de novo or new to you, or it could be an allergy that other people in your family have. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna talk mainly about food allergies. So there are lots of food allergies out there, but I do want you to know that the number one food allergy that has the least likelihood of being outgrown is peanut allergy. So peanut allergy, um, there's cows, cow milk, eggs, soy, wheat, fish, and tree nuts, um, many others. But peanut allergy is actually the allergy that's the least likely to be outgrown. It's also the allergy that has the highest risk of something called anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is your body's full reaction to something that it's allergic to in the form of vomiting, trouble breathing, things of that nature. Now allergies can vary, so it could be something as simple as you put a new food in your mouth and you start itching around your lips, or you start getting hives and you start itching your skin. Um, you can also have a tingling sensation with nothing actually on your skin and that can be the beginning of an actual allergic reaction to something. Allergies can also cause you to have other things in your breathing tract like sneezing, wheezing, kind of like if you were asthmatic, shortness of breath, coughing, difficulty swallowing, and those are things that are quite serious that you should definitely seek emergency medical attention for. Anything that has to do with your breathing or the breathing of your child is something um, your doctor needs to be aware of. So some of these foods that are allergens can cause mild reactions and some of them can also cause serious reactions. Now, for an example, my Kemi is allergic to fish. The reason we know she's allergic to fish is because her dad and her grandmother on her dad's side have a fish allergy. So we were concerned that she may get a fish allergy. Not all allergies are through families, but if you do have a family um, history of an allergy, you have to be cautious when introducing that food to your child. So the first time Kemi had fish, it was salmon. And she had it pretty young, maybe between the ages of nine months to one year. The first time she had salmon, I was watching her. As soon as she took the tiniest piece, she started scratching her, her lips. But she still ate it, she enjoyed it. And then I was like, okay, maybe that was a reaction, I'm not sure. The second time she had something that had tilapia, she got a full body rash. Not too, not too bad, but I noticed she had hives on her body and she was scratching. Both of those times I gave her a medicine called Sertarazine, which is an allergy medicine that is non-sedating, so it wouldn't make her sleepy. And all those symptoms went away. Now, the third time she had fish, we went to a friend's house 
and they had a dish that they had fish in and they uh, they had asked us they didn't ask us about allergies and I didn't think to ask but as soon as she had the food within 30 minutes she was vomiting and then when we got here when we and, and another time at home I had the littlest bit of fish in one of our traditional soups called ikusi and she wanted to try it with me and she had not even one or two little balls and within 30 minutes she started vomiting so if a child is exposed to a food that could potentially be an allergen to them the very first um, exposure to that food is not going to be full blown it's usually something small like the itching or the rash and then when it turns into shortness of breath coughing wheezing or vomiting or diarrhea that's when you know it's approaching the level of anaphylaxis so even though I'm a pediatrician Kemi has her own pediatrician and when I took her for her checkup and I told her doctor this story the doctor said one Kemi needs an epinephrine pen two Kemi needs to be seen by an allergy doctor to confirm her if she truly has a fish allergy now there are other things in the sea like um, shrimp that Kemi loves and she eats a lot of and she doesn't have any allergy to and she eats all the other foods that I talked about that could be allergens but if your child has an allergy to your food um, sometimes it's it usually would you usually won't notice it in the beginning in the beginning it will just be mouth and then with continuous exposure then she may have a full on anaphylactic reaction so now kids who are the highest risk of anaphylaxis um, are usually kids who have something called atopy. So atopy, and in the medical profession, we know it as at the atopic triad. And in the atopic triad, it's, a, it's three things. Eczema, asthma, and allergies. So the allergies can be food allergies, environmental allergies, any of those kind of allergies. So those three things go together. So if you have one of them, maybe someone else in your immediate family has one of the other thing, or you can have all three yourself or two out of the three or what have you but um, Kemi's dad when he was younger he had asthma and he had allergies to those foods so I wasn't surprised that Kemi had a food allergy she had very mild very mild eczema when she was little but she quickly grew out of it and we'll talk about eczema in another video but for the purposes of this video since we're talking about food allergies, I do want you to know that kids who have asthma that's confirmed, they have a higher risk of having anaphylaxis, that's a full body reaction to an allergen um, because they have atopy, because they have one of those other three things. So if your kid has asthma and you think they have a peanut allergy, you should always have in your possession an epinephrine pen, um, pen to help them in the case of exposure to that food that they're allergic to. Now, if your child has an, an, a history of anaphylactic reaction to a food allergy, let's say peanuts, they can go from exposure to the peanuts in, let's say their friend at school gave them a chocolate bar that has peanuts in it, to within 30 minutes having shortness of breath, vomiting, and needing to be sent to the emergency room. Hopefully in their school or their daycare, that institution has an EpiPen or the parent of that, uh, the parent of that child, or you yourself as the parent, has an EpiPen that you got from the doctor that the school can give to your child as soon as possible. Um, and as soon as you give the child the EpiPen and kind of gives them the epinephrine, and that helps calm their body down, you need to take the baby or the child to the emergency room for further evaluation because um, anaphylaxis can be kind of what we call a biphasic reaction. So the first 30 minutes where they had that big reaction and they couldn't breathe and you gave the epi epinephrine pen, you saved them in that 30 minutes, but sometimes within um, four, to six, four to eight hours from that first instant, they can have another reaction. So 20% of kids actually can have another reaction with a resurgence of the shortness of breath of the vomiting 48 hours after that first time so if you give them the epinephrine and you send them home or you send them to bed they could have a bad reaction within 48 hours so they need to be monitored 
again in the emergency room or something of that nature. One thing I want a lot of parents to be knowledgeable about is the fact that people feel if your child has an allergy or has an allergic reaction and it's something mild like a rash, that all you need at home is Benadryl. So Benadryl is the uh, market name for a medicine called Diphenhydramine. In different parts of the world, it's called different things like Puritan, depending on where you're at. But Diphenhydramine is the medical name. Um, Diphenhydramine is good for allergies. However, you need to give it every six hours. And it's also sedating, meaning it makes the, the kids sleepy. So what I want a lot of parents to learn from this is if you have a child that potentially has an allergy to a food or something like that, if you give them diphenhydramine, don't think all is well, you know, don't do that and then stop because they can have, they can still progress to uh, anaphylaxis. Um, and diphenhydramine you have to give every six hours so if it's overnight and you give your child diphenhydramine um, they may need it in the middle of the night so don't get comfortable just by having that at home and that's all you have you should truly also have an EpiPen to be on the safe side fortunately a lot of food allergies are outgrown in childhood so take for instance um, um, I had a food allergy to eggs when I was little and I only started eating eggs when I was in residency so about five years ago um, so at the time I would have a lot of throat itching and lip itching anytime I would have eggs eggs is actually one of the top food allergies that a lot of people grow out of peanuts is not so a lot of kids grow out of um, um, about 80 to 90 percent of kids that have allergies to eggs, soy, wheat, milk, they grow out of it by age five. But peanuts is the number one allergy that people have lifelong. So if you're a confirmed peanut allergy holder or your child is a confirmed peanut allergy haver, you need to always have them with an EpiPen at home, at school, at daycare, wherever they are, just because of um, exposures. Because only one out of five kids who have a peanut allergy outgrow them. In the US, there are two types of epi epinephrine pens. Um, there's the EpiPen, and it's called EpiPen Junior for kids and just EpiPen for adults. Um, I'm gonna show you some images about how what they look like and how to give it to yourself. The one thing I want you to learn about the EpiPen is blue to the sky and orange to the thigh. So in the image, you'll see the person gripping the EpiPen and the blue portion is to the top and then the orange portion is the, the portion that's gonna be on the thigh. And it's very, very simple to use. A lot of people are afraid of epinephrine or using the EpiPen, but the risk of not using the EpiPen within the first 30 minutes when you feel a person is having anaphylaxis is way way higher than the side effect of the medicine on its own no one will ever chastise you or yell at you as a parent or as a teacher if you give a child an epinephrine pen if you felt the child was having anaphylaxis and you took them to the doctor after or you took them to the er and you said i gave the epipen everyone will say good job no one is going to be upset with you so you take off the blue part of the epipen and then you put and then you um you firmly place the orange part on the thigh and then you count for 10 seconds and then you're done. The second type of epinephrine auto injector, which is automatic injector in the market right now is called AVQ. Um, it's very interesting because it is known as the talking epinephrine auto injector. Um, the reason being that when you take it out of the case, it tells you exactly what to do. So as soon as you take it out of the case, it starts. Tell, it tells you pull off the red part, put the red part to your thigh, and then it, it tells you to press firmly, and then it counts down for you for five seconds. And when you when it's done counting down, then you completely administer the epinephrine in the canister. So those two are the two types of epinephrine injectors in the market. Um, the AVQ is a little bit more expensive than the epinephrine pen um, and if you have insurance, depending on what kind of insurance you have, um, you can get one or the other. 
So what can you do if you think your child may be allergic to a certain food? What you can do is take your child and that first exposure to the pediatrician um, and the child allergy can be confirmed in two ways, either through blood tests or skin tests. So the, the pediatrician or the allergy doctor can do skin tests that test that checks if the body, your child's body will react to a little piece of that food that you think they may be allergic to on the skin or through the blood. And most of the time, um, those tests need to be done when the child is at least one year old. The doctors and the allergy doctors are also the same people who are going to give you the prescription for the EpiPen or the RVQ that you should have at home and in school. So if you are a new parent who is worried about allergies, please, please talk to your doctor and ask all the questions. If you have a strong family history of allergies, more that's a more reason to talk to your doctor about food and starting babies on certain foods. Train yourself to read labels for the food that you're cooking for your child if you've confirmed that your child has an allergy and try to get a, another variety of the same food so the child is not exposed to it. Now I do want you to know that in a lot of parts of the world that's westernized, um, for a long time there was a push for um, us to not introduce things like eggs peanuts and fish until the child is about nine months or one year they found out that because that push happened there were actually more cases of kids having new onset peanut fish and egg allergies so if your family doesn't have any history of food allergies please begin to introduce your child to some variety of these foods early early meaning as early as six months old um, but if you do have a family history of like peanut allergy or fish allergy or egg allergy, you may want to wait until later. Um, but if you don't have any family history, you start them early because they are less likely to have the allergy as they get older. So that's all I have for you today about allergies. I hope that was insightful. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, if you yourself have allergies or if you have children who have food allergies, please let me know in the comments section. I really want to be able to engage with you guys and talk to you about this topic. Um, also follow me on my Instagram at AskDrAja and I will post more information about allergies in there. I am pretty passionate about allergies because Kemi has an allergy to fish and I had an allergy to egg when I was growing up. Hopefully Kemi will grow out of her allergies because there are so many yummy fish out there and I want her to be able to eat all these things. But um, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, make sure you share this video, make sure you subscribe, um, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.